In this video, we're going to focus on SN2 intramolecular reactions. Now first, let's talk about the difference between an intermolecular reaction and an intramolecular reaction. So in an intermolecular reaction, the reaction is between two different molecules. For instance, let's say if we have hydroxide reacting with methyl bromide. This is an intermolecular SN2 reaction. Now, with an intramolecular SN2 reaction, you have both the nucleophile and the leaving group in the same substrate, which is what we're going to consider in this example. So in the first step, hydride, which is a strong base, is going to remove the acidic proton in the OH group. So we're going to get an alkoxide ion. Now notice that we have both the nucleophile and the leaving group all in the same molecule. So this is going to be where we have an intramolecular reaction, where the molecule reacts with itself. So the nucleophile is going to attack this carbon, kicking out the leaving group. Whenever you have these intramolecular reactions, you're going to get a ring. So if we count the carbon atoms and the oxygen, we could say this is number one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to get a six membered ring. So what we have here is a cyclic ether. Let me draw that better. So that's the answer for this problem. So that is an intramolecular SN2 reaction. Now let's try another example problem. Feel free to pause the video and work on this problem. We're going to react it with sodium hydride again. Now, just like before, the hydride ion is going to participate in the acid base reaction, removing the proton. And we're going to get an alkoxide ion, which is also part of an alkyl halide. Now with the other reactant, we're going to get the same thing. Hydride can remove a hydrogen, put in the negative charge on that oxygen. But notice that the stereochemistry is different. What do you think is going to happen here? Because we have a nucleophile and a leaving group all in the same molecule. Now if you recall, in order for the SN2 reaction to work, the nucleophile must approach the substrate from the back. So if bromine is in the front, the nucleophile must be coming in the back. It's not going to come and do a front side attack because hydroxide will be repelled by the partially negatively charged bromine atom. So the front side attack won't work. Notice that this oxygen and the bromine, they're locked in the same position. They're both in the front. So this negatively charged oxygen, it's not going to attack this carbon because in order for it to attack it, it's approaching it from the front. So this is going to stop here. Now for the other one, the bromine's in the back, the oxygen's in the front. So for this one, we can get an intramolecular SN2 reaction. This can attack this carbon, kicking out the Br. And what we're going to get is a special kind of ether. When you get a three-membered ether like this, 
This is known as an epoxide. But in order to get the epoxide, these two groups have to be anti with respect to each other. And then the ether, I mean the epoxide, the carbon oxygen bonds will be on the same side because this is going to attack from the front, kicking out the BR that's in the back. So that's another example of an SN2 intramolecular reaction. Let's look at another example. So here we have 1,5-dibromopentane. And we're going to react it with ammonia. Now, this particular reaction can give us a mixture of products. But we're going to focus on the formation of one product. And what we need to do is we're going to propose a mechanism for the formation of this particular product, even though we can get a lot of other products for this reaction. So feel free to pause the video and propose a mechanism for the formation of this product. So ammonia is a nucleophile, it's also a weak base. And what we have here is a primary alkyl halide. So we're gonna get an SN2 reaction. The nucleophile is going to attack from the back, kicking out the leaving group. So we're gonna get this. So right now the nitrogen has three hydrogen atoms attached to it. So it's going to have a positive formal charge because it has a total of four bonds. Now we need this nitrogen to behave as a nucleophile and attack this carbon so that we can close and form the ring. Before we can do that though, we need to remove a hydrogen from this nitrogen. And we could use another ammonia molecule to do that. So now this NH2 is once again nucleophilic. So at this point, an intramolecular reaction is going to happen. This nitrogen will attack the carbon, kick out the leaving group. So we can call this number one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we're going to get a six-membered ring with nitrogen being part of that ring. But right now, nitrogen has two hydrogen atoms attached to it, and it has a positive formal charge. So we need to use another ammonia molecule to remove this hydrogen. I can definitely draw that better. And this is going to give us our final product, which is a cyclic amine. So that's how we can get this product from this particular alkyl halide. Now keep in mind, there's a lot of other products that we can get for that reaction. This is just one of the many products that we can get.